Good morning, everyone, um, or good afternoon. Thank, thanks for joining us where, wherever you might be. Um, we have a slightly different session here for you today that we really hope we'll be able to sort of benefit businesses out there that are looking to sort of grow and uh, expand into new uh, or explore new opportunities. So quick introduction from me. So my name is Luke Forte. I'm a Proposition Delivery Manager uh, at Barclays Eagle Labs. You know, we're, we're here to support businesses of all shapes and sizes to, to on their journey through growth. So um, this is hopefully going to be a way in which we can do that as well. So a huge part of my role, uh, our, our role as Eagle Labs is supporting businesses to make valuable connections. And um, we do this through multiple channels, such as the Global Connect program, where we support high growth UK businesses to access and increase their exposure to international markets. So we've got a lot happening this year. Um, so if you haven't or not, not aware of us already, then please subscribe to this channel, check out our website and follow us on socials to find out more. Um, and if you are new to us, then please don't hesitate to reach out to myself, find me on LinkedIn or reach out to us through our website labs.uk.barclays um, and we'll be able to very happily tell you more. Um, so today we have a brilliant session lined up for you. Um, we've been joined by some real experts in their trade um, and our panel have a real wealth of knowledge in terms of um, and their experiences when it comes to the ecosystem in Hong Kong uh, and together they support businesses daily uh, to expand and seek new opportunities in Hong Kong. So we're really lucky to have them with us today and taking their time to, to spend this, um, this time with us today and, and run through this. So quick disclaimer, and then we'll get into meeting the panel. But we have asked our panel to join us today to provide some tips and tricks uh, on Hong Kong. Um, the topics discussed are an overview of options for you to think about and to help you with your independent research and business decisions. So aren't intended as advice or recommendations. Um, remember as well that your business has its own individual circumstances. So the statements and views expressed may not be applicable or suitable for your business. Just before we meet the panel, so to make the most of this session, if you've joined us new today, that um, we're, we're in VBOX and we're on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below to join us in VBOX. And if you're in VBOX, you'll see that there's a chat functionality. This is where you'll be able to post your own questions or comments to our speakers today and our panel today. Um, so then we can ask those questions that are really burning for each of you individually. So please do make the most of that um, and join us in VBOX there if you haven't already. So that's enough from me. Um, so let's meet the panel. Let's, let's meet our speakers that are joining, joining us today. So Jane, can I ask you to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Um, you know, it's a real pleasure to be here and thank you ever so much Barclays Eagle Labs for inviting me to speak. My name is Jane Chan, I head of the Startup Hong Kong team at Invest Hong Kong. Now Invest Hong Kong is a government department supporting overseas companies to establish in a city and um, I would love just to tell you a little bit more about the startup ecosystem later. Fantastic. Corin? Hi, yes, uh, I'm Corin Wilson. I'm the Director for Trade and Investment for the UK's Department for Business and Trade, uh, based here in the British Consulate General in Hong Kong. Uh, I've been here three years now, but have about 20 years of experience working around the world, uh, helping UK companies export and invest overseas. And last but not least, Mark? Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. And also thanks to... Be, uh, the guys at Barclays Eagle Labs for inviting us to to, to join today. Um, so um, my name is Mark Headley. I'm uh, Jane's uh, London-based colleague at Invest uh, Hong Kong's uh, London office. Uh, so my background, um, you know, I've sort of spent twenty plus years working in dealing with with uh, the Greater China region. So I've spent ten years at the uh, China Britain Business Council. Um, and prior to that, a uh, number of years living in Asia, helping companies to uh, enter into the, the, the China and Hong Kong markets. Um, so that's me. And I think we're just going to go straight into my slides, aren't we? So if, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, Amazing. Thank you. Great. OK, well, um, Jane, Jane is going to um, uh, in a moment speak about the kind of startup uh, ecosystem in in Hong Kong and some of the opportunities there but I thought um, it would make sense to kind of kick things off with a, uh, a starting piece on why businesses at a more general level might want to think about um, about Hong Kong as a, as a market and as an opportunity um, so um, I think just just to kick that off um, you know Hong Kong um, is a relatively small 
market in and of itself i mean as a as a as a location you know it's a it's a it's a very large large city or a, you know sort of uh it's a special economic region of uh the people's republic of china so it's a you know it's a relatively small place in the sense that you know we have 7.5 uh, million people living there um in and of itself the market is is interesting it's very dynamic you have v a very affluent consumers there um it's a relatively advanced market um but i think more importantly is its sort of geographical location um it sits right in the heart of the east asia region um so if you sort of uh to sort of draw a circumference around hong kong you are four hours away from all of asia's key markets so obviously that means mainland china Japan, South Korea, Vietnam, you know, some of the emerging markets uh, in the East a Asia region. And, um, you know, if we go a bit further afield, thinking about this, um, the sort of South Asian continent, India, Aus Australasia, you're actually within five hours of half the world's population uh, from Hong Kong. So strategically, whether your business is more oriented towards the mainland China mainland of China or the wider Indo-Pacific region, Hong Kong, you know, offers a very uh, convenient uh, place from which to reach those markets. Um, you know, you have uh, 120 airlines operating there. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, hub for uh, for transport and, and logistics. Um, so it really is a very convenient place to be uh, uh to be to be based uh just geographically which i think is one of the reasons why it has um over many years become this uh important global uh trading hub so i think that's the sort of reason number one why businesses tend to go to hong kong um secondly i mean i've spoken about china i think um not everyone will be familiar with the, this the concept of the greater bay area um we all know about the the sort of san francisco bay area the japan tokyo bay as being sort of you know important hubs of innovation and 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 technology and um fantastic markets in and of their own right the gba is a similar sort of concept um by gba we typically mean the sort of uh, southern uh, provinces of China, particularly Guang, uh, Guangdong province, um, which Hong Kong borders, and um, you know, if we if we add up the uh, the whole population, including Macau and Hong Kong, you're talking about 86 million people, um, combined uh, GDP of 1.6 trillion US dollars, um, you know, which is roughly equivalent to an economy the size of uh, Australia or Spain. So it's a huge area and it, it represents a uh, um, actually a fantastic market opportunity because uh, you're talking about 11 uh, cities um, that have, you know, increasingly affluent populations. Um, so as a, as a, as a destination to sell products and services to, the Greater Bay Area is a huge market. It enables businesses to use Hong Kong as a launch pad into mainland China and to test uh, test the market really from from Hong Kong. Um, in Hong Kong, we have sort of one country, two systems, so you can be based in Hong Kong and operating under a very different sort of uh, legal and regulatory framework than. Uh, mainland China, but yet it gives you an opportunity to access those uh, those consumers, and it's also a very good shop window because you have lots of uh, mainland uh, Chinese um, people traveling through uh, through Hong Kong, and lots of uh, China, Chinese companies have um, have have their international operation operations based in Hong Kong, so it's also a good way to reach those those people, and of course. Um, the government has really been pushing this in the last few years. There's been a lot of investment into uh, infrastructure, roads, bridges, and so on. And I think over the next couple of decades, what you'll see is more closer integration between the two regions, making it easier to travel, easier to bring talent in from, from the mainland uh, for technology companies, you know, leveraging uh, Shenzhen's um, capabilities around manufacturing and R&D. Um, 
create a great, great opportunities for overseas businesses. I think more generally, I mean, why why companies choose Hong, Hong Kong? It's quite an easy place to do business. Obviously, the UK has a historical connection to uh, to Hong Kong. Um, English speaking, you know, English is one of the two languages spoken there alongside Chinese. Um, the It's a relatively um, light regulatory environment. Um, it's... Uh, it's an open place to do business. It's a very international city, um, fantastic infrastructure. Thinking about innovation, you know, I think five of the top uh, 50 global universities, I think actually top 100 universities and three of the top 50 global universities are in Hong Kong. So there's tremendous talent there as well. Um, the bars, the nightclub, I'm sure that, that Corinne and, and Jane will speak to this, but the bars and nightclub, nightlife are amazing so it's just a it's just a great place to travel and to be based um so that's i think a key attraction for people that are thinking of moving there with their family and of course um you know it is low tax um, and uh compared and it's the tax system is relatively simple um compared to the uk which you know we have lots of uh, arcane regulations around tax and it can be quite uh, challenging of the markets like the US, where you know filing tax re returns is a is a is a very complex matter. Uh, Hong Kong, it's it's simple and easy to do that. And also interestingly, for a uh, for startups, uh, your first uh, two million Hong Kong dollars of profits are taxed at eight point two five percent. So a very low tax um, environment for a for a startup um, that uh, you know wants to kind of keep their keep keep their costs under control at the, that early stage uh, there's no VAT um, you know there's it's it's relatively straightforward and doesn't involve a huge amount of uh, bureaucracy in, in in sort of filing tax returns setting up a company as well is relatively painless and and straightforward compared to many other markets so overall I think getting started as a as a as a young company in in Hong Kong is you know compared to other markets relatively straightforward i'll let jane sort of go into a bit more detail on the startup ecosystem but just to highlight that we are there to support companies um all types of companies from early stage startups through to uh, uh multinationals we provide um free and confidential support through the whole process of um setting up in hong kong and then once you're there you know we support you with your with your growth, we we make connections, we um, we support you throughout that process. So, if you're interested, please do reach out to us. I'm very happy to um, discuss further how we can support. Uh, so, with that, I will uh, I'll hand back to Luca, or perhaps just. Yeah, no, th thanks so much for that, Mark. No, it's got a really great um, sort of intro to, to the session and, and sort of Invest HK as well. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, but let's, let's move on to Jane, uh, who's going to tell us a little bit more. So over to you, Jane. Okay. Um, again, thanks again for having me. It's, uh, it's, okay. it's really lovely to be here. I have head up the Startup in Hong Kong team, which is Invest Hong Kong startup division. And what we do is effectively work with our overseas offices like Mark, um, as well as with our nine different sector teams here in the Hong Kong office to provide another layer of information and support. So, you know, as you probably know, the startup ecosystem is very dynamic. It's changing all the time. Trying to keep on tabs on, on top of that is actually, you know, quite hard. So that's where our team comes in. We work um, with our clients to basically, you know, connect you to relevant stakeholders, whether we're talking potential investors, potential clients. We invite you to our various events so you can catch get exposure um, and you know all these different kind of things to ensure that you land as easily as possible when you hit Hong Kong so I'll go into the presentation so um, just in terms of the, the startup ecosystem we've been tracking the development of um, you know how it's been doing over the the past kind of eight or nine years actually and we do have a very vibrant startup ecosystem you'll see the figures here on the top left um you know the, the number of startups who've got residing at the various co-work spaces accelerated 
accelerators and incubators has been you know growing steadily for the past five years even during the you know the the midst of the COVID as well. And it basically shows how resilient and you know startups really are. I mean, even when you know you're sort of like faced with a, a very kind of challenging kind of business condition, you know, startups are there, they're looking for opportunities and they're basically starting up as well. Um, the number of co-work spaces, accelerators and incubators have also expanded in that time in a bid to try and support this, this group of companies. One of the things that we are incredibly proud of um, in the Hong Kong startup ecosystem is the fact that it is very international. About 25% of the founders of the startups come from outside of Hong Kong, they're non-locals. And if you add in, you know, even the, the percentage of what we call returnees, the ones who've left Hong Kong, been educated abroad and, you know, maybe done some business overseas and come back. When you add all of that in, we're, we're talking about about 33%, so about a third. And you'll see on the bottom there, um, you know, where most of those uh, founders from outside of Hong Kong come from. So mainland China, of course, is one of those, um, you know, main places where these founders come into Hong Kong and start working in businesses but we've also got a lot of like Americans and Brits of course as well and the French and a whole host of other um, countries of origin as well for our founders. In terms of the sectors that these startups actually work in, unsurprisingly, fintech is, is our biggest group, um, unsurprisingly, because Hong Kong is one of the world's financial centers. And of course, we've got like about 300,000 people working within the financial services sector here in Hong Kong. So it's unsurprising that that is a, you know, a very big kind of chunk of the, the kind of areas that startups go into. But we've also, as Mark mentioned, been a trading hub for decades and that, um, basically spins off a whole bunch of e-commerce as well as um, supply chain, logistics, tech, um, tech kind of companies. But also partly because, you know, mainland China, which is next door, is, is you know, the world's largest e-commerce market. And a lot of the companies who are interested to tap into that typically set up something in Hong Kong because it gives them like a, a governance kind of structure. It gives them like, you know, tax benefits and things. And then they then service the, the mainland Chinese market from here or they set something up here first and then they also set something up in various places within the mainland and vice versa. We also have the mainland Chinese companies leveraging Hong Kong to go international as well. So we do see, you know, quite a few kind of startups working in that kind of area. The ICT side of things, so we club that in with, um, you know, the likes of SaaS platforms, um, you know, the kind of prop tech kind of management dashboard kind of systems. All of that is also very vibrant here. And something that we noticed, um, you know, coming up quite strongly over the past couple of years is, you know, the ATEC sector which is unsurprising, you know, so it's been going up in um, all different locations as everyone leveraged digital means to, you know, to, to access education in some kind of way, whether that's by, you know, the schools being forced to do that or basically people, you know, liking that convenience and then, you know, basically getting more into that as well. So we've seen a, a massive kind of jump in terms of the ed tech kind of sector here. In terms of the, the unicorns, um, you know, Hong Kong for a population of 7.5 million people and the fact that we are a relatively nascent startup ecosystem, you know, we're talking seven, eight years. I think we've done quite well in terms of the creation of, of unicorns per capita. I think over the past kind of eight years, we've had about 12 unicorns being created. And, you know, some of them, we, these ones are the ones that are still listed as a unicorn and, and not gone through M&As or, you know, listed. But it varies from the fintech tech kind of companies that you see at the top there, we love TNG and Bitmix mm -hmm. to ranging through to travel tech, which is what Kluk is, as well as, um, you know, Lala Move is a, a logistics company, Smart More is AI and robotics, Animoca Brands, one of the foremost Web3 um, gaming blockchain kind of companies globally and who are investing into a number of um, companies as well. I think their portfolio is about, seven, uh, about 450 companies in the Web3 kind of space. All of them are actually started in Hong Kong or they're still here in Hong Kong. The recent exit we've had, which was last year, we had a logistics, uh, we had a 
uh, van on demand company, a logistics kit company that listed in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange on the main board last year, raising 86 million US, and also Prenetics, um, which is a uh, you know, they, they do DNA kind of testing, and I think they were the testing, the COVID testing company for the Premier League actually last year and the year before. Um, but they do a lot of other things beside the, the kind of testing. Um, they basically went public via the SPAC deal on the NASDAQ last year, and now with the, with the Artisan acquisition, which is part of one of the large conglomerates. Um, here in Hong Kong, collectively, they are now valued at 1.7 billion US. So, just uh, you know, one of the questions I get asked an awful lot by startups when I go around the world and talk to them is like, um, you know, what's the the funding scene like, especially since you know that's really been dried up and or drying up in a lot of different regions. I think it's quite healthy here in Hong Kong. Um, you know, this is a, an independent report by the Hong Kong Founders Report, which listed uh, you know 163 deals from uh, 2022 up to I think about something like March of this year. Three 3.8 billion US dollars have been invested into the startups here in Hong Kong. Um, I will say the majority of them, you know, have been like larger kind of ticket sizes into, into a smaller number of companies. Um, but, you know, you'll see on the right hand side the, the split across the, the various kind of uh, stages that our investors here like to invest in. And I mentioned Animoca Ventures. If you want to know the top 10 most active venture investors here in the city, um, Animoca has, you know, they raised a, a bunch of uh, money to start investing in, uh, to build actually an ecosystem, a web free ecosystem. And if you ever hear Yat Seal, who's the executive chairman, uh, speak, and, and then, you know, he is around the world talking um, he's a very large proponent of the digital property rights and you know he wants to make an impact so you know their company have actually invested in, in quite a lot of uh, web3 blockchain gaming uh, crypto kind of spaces nft platforms exchanges all of that to try and collectively make more of an impact in the space that he he wants to push that, that whole kind of web three space into. Horizon Ventures, um, they are, again, one of the large kind of part of a, a large conglomerate here. They have invested in, in tech for, for many years and, and actually, you know, they've got some really strong companies, several unicorns in their portfolio. And then you'll see some of the other ones listed there as well, who are also very active here. So what's the government doing? We have been, you know, pushing this whole innovation and technology space, we do realize that, you know, one of the ways to diversify and add value to our economy is actually through the pursuit of tech. And it's a great leveler, you know, as we all know, if you, you know, your, your founder can actually uh, come from all types of backgrounds, as long as they, you know, they've got a tenacity, they've got the great idea, they can execute, and they are, are able to deliver on what investors want and also what the customers want, you know, you've got a chance to actually make a very, very big difference. So the, the government realizes that and has been, you know, putting quite a lot of resources into nurturing this kind of sector. And I've just listed some of these activities here that has literally just come out in the past few months, for example, you know, uh, our feasibility on developing an AI supercomputing center, um, also the establishment of a microelectronics R&D Institute, um, three billion Hong Kong dollars um, earmarked for research in AI and quantum technology, Cyberport, which is one of the Hong Kong's main science parks, will allocate 500 million Hong Kong dollars for a digital transformation support pilot programs for SMEs. So this is basically to try and support SMEs who may not have the resources um, either in, in person or at the finances to really upgrade themselves in, on a digital kind of basis. And the government is, is putting a whole bunch of money to try and support that on a one-to-one -one matching basis. Um, Science Park, the other main R&D park in Hong Kong, will be injecting uh, 400, uh, million Hong Kong dollars into a corporate venture fund as well as uh, uh, additional funds to develop co-acceleration programs with other corporates as well. Um, you know, another uh, fund that was announced is, is the 5 billion Hong Kong, which is, you know, 640 
million US dollars into a strategic tech fund um, by the government to actually invest in tech, strategic tech. Um, so, you know, there's definitely been a lot of, um, you know, kind of financial resources being put into the sector to try and, and develop this. But in conjunction with the finances, you know, there's also policies as well, which are, you know, going in to try and provide a kind of like a, a strong infrastructure to develop this further. One of which is the new visa programs to try and att attract top talent top talent to the city. I mean, we do have some great universities producing fantastic talent, but, you know, name a tech hub that is not in need of good tech talent. And, you know, and, and I always say, like, <laughs> yeah, there, there isn't one that doesn't need a lot of tech talent. So Hong Kong, we've been sort of like, um, you know, developing this top talent visa program where graduates of the world's top 100 universities can basically get a two year visa without securing a job here first. So, you know, such talent can come to the city and they can decide, you know, what they want to do, whether they want to set up their own business, take it easy for a couple of years or, you know, whatever kind of combination of, of like, um, you know, career path they like to take, that, that kind of two years gives them that option to, to explore that further. Um, there's also been a VC matching fund that's just been extended and there's currently 17 venture funds that is um, the, part, the government is partnering to actually invest in startups as well. Now, one of the areas that Hong Kong has been going leaps and bounds, and we've had a huge amount of interest, is actually on you know, related to the Web3 kind of developments, actually. We are, the, the regulators recently came out with, uh, you know, a couple of licenses for what they call virtual asset trading platforms. So we're talking about exchanges as well as the, you know, the smaller kind of financial companies that are dealing in uh, virtual assets, so we're talking crypto here, we're talking about other types of, you know, NFTs um, related to tokenizations, not the, the art kind of side of things. Um, you know, people who are involved in that kind of sector to actually be um, regulated, and I think that gives peace of mind, especially, you know, we've been talking, we've been hearing about the, the crypto winter for quite a while now, and we've seen the, the kind of um, situation that's happened, uh, you know, across the across the board on crypto where, you know, even very large kind of exchanges have actually gone down. Um, I think that the kind of um, you know, the licensing actually provides a peace of mind and basically licensed companies can start selling now to retail, although, you know, there are still come very stringent kind of requirements to fulfill before you can do that. Um, Hong Kong and UAE also announced plans to collaborate on crypto regulation as well. Anyone who's on the crypto space knows that the Middle East have been sort of developing a bunch of new kind of policies to try and make it very friendly for crypto related companies and Web3 companies to you know, establish and, and set up and, and start um, operating their businesses there. So Hong Kong, um, you know, and, and UAE were collaborating to try and develop that kind of space further. In terms of the ecosystem, there's been new associations being formed on a very regular basis. I just wanted to highlight a couple Web3 Harbor. It's, um, you know, it's basically got some really strong crypto people behind it. Um, a lot of people may not know, but some of the biggest exchanges um, globally started in Hong Kong. So, you know, there's a lot of people involved in that space with a lot of expertise, and they basically, uh, uh, quite a few of them have got involved in this Web3 Harbor to try and develop this kind of space in a, in a positive kind of manner as much as possible. Um, there's also been the Hong Kong Virtual Asset Consortium, Consortium that have been, um, basically announced last month, uh, which is a platform offering ratings and indices for a number of cryptocurrencies, and that's just increasing all the time. So, you know, these kind of things, these kind of activities, I think, again, is good filling in some of the gaps that, um, you know, people feel with the, the, the development of, of crypto and, and just trying to alleviate some of that worry and concern um, about this kind of space. Um, there's also been additional kind of funds being put in, 6.4 million US dollars to attract and support Web3 companies. And there's also been a new task force that the government set up to try and develop this space further. And, um, you know, I mentioned Yat Seal from Alam, uh, Anamoka. He is one of the members, as is it, Invest Hong Kong as well. And collectively, we really hope to, to steer Hong Kong into a place where, you know, the whole Web3, the crypto, digital assets kind of space can actually grow and pro 
you know, progress in a way that is relatively safe uh, without trying to crimp people's kind of um, opportunities too much. But we do need to ensure that there is the right level of protection for the, you know, the retail kind of consumers as well. So more support on the Web3. And then finally, if you're interested, after hearing all of that, um, to learn more about what the startup ecosystem is like, you know, I'd just like to highlight the Startup Hong Kong Festival, which is an event we've been running every year um, for the past eight years, and it's going to run from the 8th to the 17th of November this year. Um, just to give you a recap in terms of numbers, in 2022, we had about 20,000 participants. It was virtual. Um, actually, no, it was hybrid, but I think direct um, attendees was up about 20,000 people. But if you add in the kind of virtual views as well, we had 196,000 streaming views on that. So it's, it's quite established and it's, it's pretty popular. Um, and it's, uh, it's basically comprising um, a number of events focused on in different industries um, that's organized by different event organizers as well. So you get a real flavor of what's happening in that specific industry and, you know, to, to get like a, you know, the, the real experts view on what's happening on the ground, both in Hong Kong and within the region as well. So for this year, um, you can get more information on the startmeup.hk website. I won't go into too deep, too much detail, but there's going to be, you know, lots of different events happening there. There'll be opportunities to actually be um, matched to investors, mentors, corporates through the Start Meetup that we're working with, with Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund, for example. There's PropTech that's happening on the 14th, Climate Tech on the 1.5C, and that's in collaboration with um, Eureka Nova, which is, again, the open innovation arm of one of the large um, uh, conglomerates here, the property kind of conglomerates, you know, they are looking for companies to potentially work with all their different business units um, in the sustainability space. So that's why they've been working on creating an event there as well. Um, so lots and lots of things happening and we would love to potentially welcome some of you to check it out. And if you are interested, I believe uh, the Tech West um, England um, advocates are actually creating a, a mission uh, to come to Hong Kong for the Start with Hong Kong Festival. So, you know, if you are interested, please get in touch with them and find out more on that one. So that is me. So thank you ever so much for listening. And, um, you know, we hope that we can welcome some of you to actually come to Hong Kong. Thanks, Jane. Thank you so much. Sorry, just before we move to Corin, that, that, that was brilliant. Thank you so much. And, and you know, 190 thousand or uh, slightly more than we've got on us with us today but um but yeah no amazing stuff and and really good to hear that now out of hong kong like that that's like the aim isn't it we want to grow our businesses um to to those sorts of heights so amazing stuff um just before we move to corin um it, please guys there's the vbox is open so we're about to move into a panel session there's going to be a bit of time to be able to ask questions um and comments of of your own um to to the guys that are on us with us today so so please make sure you make the most of that vbox and and start putting those questions in now because we'll just after we've heard from corin we'll move into into that session so um uh, make sure luke, you do put those in luca just before we go to corin uh i just wanted to really highlight that mission that um, Jane mentioned at the end there, uh, organized by the Tech West England advocates. Um, so essentially, I believe that that is planned for the 13th to the 17th of, of November. So that would be the sort of the second week of the schedule that Jane showed there. And although they are predominantly focused on bringing companies from the West of England, it is open to applicants from other parts of the of the UK. Mm -hmm. So if any if anyone would like more information about that that trade mission, uh, I'd encourage them to kind of reach out either to Jane or myself, uh, uh, or indeed Corin, because I think DBT are also involved in this. And we, we we will connect you to the organizers, there is a mission brochure that we can share with people. So I just wanted to uh, highlight that as well. Uh, that's 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 awesome thank you so much for that and and that people hope people will understand from this call today there's so much support so much activity going on hopefully that that they can then reach out and and find out more so sorry Colin, sorry we interrupted there before before we moved over to you um but um yeah if you'd like to move over to to corin now thank you, 
Thank, thanks very much, Luca. Um, two very hard acts to follow, and I'm, I'm not even going to uh, attempt to do that. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, my name is Corinne Wilson. I'm the Director for Trade and Investment for the Department for Business of Trade, uh, based here in Hong Kong. Um, and I've been doing this for 20 years, and I'm still um, surprised that more companies, more people in, back home in the UK don't know that we exist don't know how the UK government um, works to support UK companies to export overseas, to invest overseas, and, and working with uh, organizations like uh, Invest Hong Kong, invest, set up, and, and operate overseas. Um, so I'm going to unashamedly take a couple of minutes just to, to, to plug us, um, but hopefully in a very positive way for, for all of you guys um, watching today. So uh, DBT, um, as I said, we focus on supporting UK companies to export and invest overseas. Uh, big companies, small companies. In fact, I'm always happier when my teams are working with SMEs and, and helping them maybe make their first steps to export overseas or expand to, to new markets overseas. We do this uh, using our UK network in the first instance. So wherever you are in the UK, there will be a DBT regional team. Um, and then within those regions, we have our international trade advisors who are really there on the ground, very specifically focused around very specific industries to help talk uh, yourselves, companies through how to export, where to export, and then to put you in touch with, with people like me and my, my teams here in, in, in Hong Kong. Um, overseas, we're based from everywhere, from Azerbaijan to, I was looking for a Z company, a country, there's only two, and unfortunately we're not in either Zambia or Zimbabwe, but in 100 plus countries around the world, you will find uh, DBT teams um, based in the embassies and the high commissions and the consulates. Um, and as I said, we will have teams here focusing on sectors from financial services, healthcare, education, tech, uh, life sciences, creative and consumer. Basically, we can find a way of fitting most companies into, into the teams that we have here overseas. We also, because we are a government department, work on trade deals and free trade agreements. So you will have seen the UK government in places like Australia and New Zealand, uh, working these free trade agreements. Hong Kong is one of those places in the world where, to be honest, you really don't need one. Uh, it's, as Mark was saying earlier, it's a very cost effective uh, place to do business in and with, but we will do that in other markets. Um, you'll, you'll hear about ministers and prime ministers going overseas with trade missions. We support all of those. And as Mark was saying earlier, um, we will be supporting the tech uh, West Advocates mission to start me up later in the year here in Hong Kong. Um, so specifically, we will find customers for, for you. We will make connections. We will open doors. Um, we will do trade missions. We will do events and activities to help you network uh, here in Hong Kong and elsewhere in, in, in the world. Um, we work on what we call market access issues. So for example, here in Hong Kong, there's a crazy high uh, spirits tax of 100%. So we're working very closely with the Hong Kong government to try and bring that down to make Hong Kong an even more attractive market for, for companies exporting any kind of spirits uh, from the UK, gin, whiskey, um, what have you. Um, and I'm here today with Invest Hong Kong. I'm sitting in the Invest Hong Kong offices. We work very closely with our international partners where we can uh, provide uh, support and resources to bring even more to help UK companies export, invest and set up overseas. Specifically in Hong Kong, we've had missions for ICT Expo and InnoX in the past. Um, I mentioned the Start Me Up UK for, uh, Hong Kong Festival where we're supporting the trade mission here. Um, we've worked with companies such as Guildhawk on um, translation technology, uh, introducing them to companies here in Hong Kong and they've done uh, very well in the last year. Uh, Tick, which is a UK API company. We've helped them find customers here and in Macau uh, in the gaming industry. And another company called Graphcore, which is an AI hardware and software company. So identifying the companies that they could be selling to, introducing them, supporting them, um, and using our networks to, to really uh, make the best of the opportunities here in Hong Kong. Um, I will uh, shut up there because um, I'm sure you guys have got uh, a lot of questions 
uh, that you'd like to specifically ask uh, myself and uh, Jane and Mark. Um, but yeah, if you want to get in contact with, with myself and, and colleagues here, uh, just go to gov.uk, Department for Business and Trade. You'll find me on, on the Hong Kong site and you can contact me via there. Alternatively, the wonder that is LinkedIn, uh, Corin Wilson. Uh, there are not many Corin Wilsons in the world, so you shouldn't have too hard a time finding me there. Um, as the slide says, uh, look for the um, not so smiley face, um, but um, also on the British Consulate General website here in Hong Kong. Um, really look forward to, to building any inquiries, really look forward to maybe seeing some of you guys uh, visiting Hong Kong, including on the, the tech uh, West Advocates mission later in the year and uh, at Start Me Up Hong Kong. So um, that's it from me. I will hand back to Luca. Thank you so much, Corin. Thank you. That's that's brilliant. And um, hopefully that's been a really well-rounded sort of set of talks there to be able to sort of really whet the appetite of a lot of businesses that are, that are seeking those new opportunities and wanting to expand. So um, we are going to move into a bit of a panel session. We've got just shy of 20 minutes, so there's plenty of time. So um, I've got some questions of my own that I've been wanting to ask. And then also we've got some questions of um, that are coming in from from people that are watching today. So so again, I can't stress it enough. Make sure you make the most of that, that chat functionality that we've got there, because um, this is the opportunity to be able to ask those questions whilst we've got the guys in front of us today. So um, to kick things off, you know, this Hong Kong sounds amazing. It sounds great. Like there's lots of opportunities. There's lots of good things going on all very positive and we like the positives but also is there any challenges that come with that what, what would you say the biggest challenges for businesses that are looking to maybe expand um or seek new opportunities in hong kong because i think that's that's important to address as well i don't know if any who if anyone would like to take that one first but uh, mark you you're on mute sorry Sorry, yeah, um, yeah. No, happy to have a have a quick go at that, and I'm sure others <laughs> others will come in. Um, yeah, I mean, I think obviously um, we live in a vet, you know, we live in a very different world now than we did maybe five or ten years ago in terms of um, the wider geopolitics of UK China, uh, sorry, US China, and the sort of some of the growing barriers there are i would say between different countries um i mean i think there are obviously some areas where in in the tech area where there may be some um challenges in terms of um coming into in, into a market like like uh, greater china um for, for certain uh companies in certain industries but i would say that for the vast majority of of smes um, in areas like software, fintech, gaming, etc., um, those challenges don't necessarily exist. So most of the challenge, the, the biggest challenge I would say for, for startups is more of a resource one. So it's more around, do you as a business have the resources to expand into, uh, you know, uh, market a market that's quite far away that does require some uh, cultural localization of your of your of your products of your of your services obviously hong kong is an english speaking uh area um but it is you know it is still asia and it is still and tastes and and um preferences are are different so um sometimes with 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 startups they may not have the resources the financial resources to to expand they may not have the the people, the experience to do that. And I think that this is why we find that um, companies that try to succeed in Hong Kong remotely, you know, to try and sell products or services from the UK uh, without having some kind of footprint on the ground, um, either, a local, either, either a local partner or, or an actual um, team in Hong Kong, it can be very, very difficult for them um, just in terms of building the network, building those connections, understanding the, the market and the opportunity, the local language skills. So, if, for example, if you're if you are focused on mainland China, you know, really, it's very difficult to develop that without without having a man, uh, you know, a Chinese speaker in the team in that time zone. So I think it's often about, you know, does the, um, does the company have the, 
the bandwidth and the financial resources to go into the market and to really make a success of it. So I think that's probably, for me, that's that's probably number one. Yeah, I think from my side, I would actually agree that those, you know, the, the kind of points that Mark's highlighted, you know, very much um, resonates. I, I think those are the biggest kind of challenges. I, I think even though Hong Kong is an incredibly, you know, business friendly city, at the end of the day, it is, uh, you know, a different culture. It's, uh, you, you're talking Asia and, and you know, you, you have to get used to a different way of working at things. So I think it's, um, you know, if you don't sort of like, almost check some of those kind of, um, you know, barriers or, or kind of, you know, mindsets, I think, um, sometimes at the door when you land in, I think, you know, it, it might just be a bit more difficult to potentially, um, you know, integrate. And the, you know, in terms of actually localizing or customizing your, your services, you know, every place has a different way of working. So it's, it's natural to, have to tweak the business model a bit or you know the, the way things are done especially if, for example if you are in logistics tech or you're trying to work with a bunch of um you know vans on deliveries um on the deliveries on demand it's a very different kind of system here in hong kong versus um you know the, the market in the uk for example and also very different to the other cities within asia as well so all of these kind of things that you've got to take into account the cost is also one uh, another issue i think it's um, you know hong kong is a very developed market so you know there is a cost implication to all of that that's why i think um you know one way for startups to really try and check things out is actually to potentially work via an accelerator program i think if you can try and get into some of the accelerator programs with a private or a, a hong kong's two major science parks i mentioned earlier the hong kong science and technology park or cyberport i think that is a great way to basically um, enable companies just to check things out in a relatively kind of risk-free kind of manner and get support in terms of um you know, financial support as well as like in networks and things like that as well. I mean, it's, um, you know, it just makes landing that much easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I would echo all, all of those points. Um, I mean, Hong Kong is is very international as a, as a city. It's very competitive. So to do your research as much as possible, you know, that's what we're here for, um, to find out whether that opportunity here is um, viable, is credible is going to sustain the resources that you need to put into expanding and investing in, into Hong Kong. Um, it's really, really important to, to do that. And, and as Mark and, and Jane touched on, finding partners, finding programs to support the comp your company in Hong Kong um, is also very important in terms of localizing and better understanding how to do business in Hong Kong. Really, really good advice. I think that's the key thing as well, isn't it? It's such such a big such a big move, but the opportunity could be huge. But you just got to make sure we do do that research. We could do do that that groundwork before before, before doing something like this. So um, spot on. Thank you all so much there. Um, another thing I was wondering, Jane, you did talk about a lot, and you showed us a great great uh, graphic there of of different um, industries, and and you know we as Eagle Labs work across lots of different industries as well. So there'll be many on this call that or that might watch this following this, but um. Is there any that any particular industries or um, sectors that Hong Kong does lend itself well to, specifically, um, and that might be slightly um, better for particular industries and, and opportunities that, that that are there? Absolutely, I, I think I mentioned one group, one sector, and that's the the Web three kind of space. Yeah. I think um, you know the kind of regulation on the kind of developments we're seeing in the market here, you know, realistically, I think we're, it's going to propel Hong Kong to become one of the top crypto hubs, top five crypto hubs globally. Um, there's been a lot of developments. And um, I think with the, you know, the history of Hong Kong being a financial hub, the kind of tech talent we've got, and also how long um, the whole kind of crypto space has developed here versus other kind of locations, um, I just think that is going to provide a lot of opportunities. And obviously, we're not talking about just purely the crypto side of things. We're talking about the ecosystem that encompasses it. So, you know, the, the builders, the infrastructure guys, the, 
you know, the all the, the marketing side, the agencies creating web free content, the, the creative industry, all of that, I think it's um I think we're expecting to see a lot of growth. The two other areas I would say that seems to be, you know, very uh, in demand at the moment, and uh, what the, one of them is is basically on uh, climate tech or, or, you know, green tech. It's uh, it's something I think around the world is is actually growing and progressing. But here in Hong Kong, there's been some changes to requirements for on, on public companies on report reporting purposes and what they do on a, you know, on a kind of sustainability level. And I think that's propelled a lot of industries and companies to look at this a bit more seriously as opposed to just paying lip service to it. Um, greenwashing, as as we've probably heard the term. Um, you know, I think it's, it's time to put money where the mouth is and we're starting to see some of that happening here in the market. The third one I would say is actually prop tech, which is sort of related to the whole sustainability side. The prop tech side we're seeing, you know, Hong Kong massively into the real estate sector here. Um, and we've got a lot of developers here who, you know, who obviously have, you know, properties here in Hong Kong, but also in lots of places around the world as well. And we are also seeing them um, take on tech and, and, you know, hiring chief innovation officers. And, and I think that's actually the, the whole COVID thing has actually moved that and propelled that forward a little bit, actually, because they've had to basically try to reach new customers when, you know, you no longer can rely on the person just walking into your, your flats and seeing whether it's great. Um, just reaching new customers, reducing cost, um, you know, using robot robots to basically clean shopping malls, all that kind of thing. We're, we're seeing a lot more kind of activity in. And I think if you're in that kind of space, I think there's, there's real opportunities here. Yeah, no, I was, I was going to echo on prop tech. And, you know, we, we, we look out the window here, we've got two massive tower block developments going on, including one right here by, by UK, UK architect Zaha Hadid. Um, but the UK, the Hong Kong government has a massive public work program, um, something like 40 billion um, uh, US uh, invested over the next few years. So there's lots of opportunity to do things greener, as, as Jane was saying, do things more efficiently um, and use tech and AI, for example, to, to really um, develop. Uh, Hong Kong over the next sort of 30 to 40 years. So probably I'd be remiss if I didn't say fintech. Of course. Um, at the at, at, at DBT at the consulate, um, we see more invest more companies going both ways from UK and Hong Kong in, in fintech across the board. I know that's broad. Uh, we had a, a delegation trade mission to um, London fintech week. We will have one here for Hong Kong fintech week. We have no trouble. Uh, having interest from the UK fintech industry. So anything around fintech um, is, is definitely um, an opportunity in Hong Kong. Awesome, thank you. That's um, that's really insightful because it's good to, it sounds like a very sort of diverse in a business sense um, uh, ecosystem that's there. So it's, uh, it's always good to hear that there's lots going on. Um, I guess it's, uh, looking into the questions now, so I guess like networking and establishing sort of um, local partnerships is a really important thing, especially from what we see over here in the UK for, with, for businesses that we work with. Like, how important is that out in Hong Kong? And is there opportunities like that? I know you mentioned, Jane, that there's lots of you know co-working spaces and places like that. But is there also accelerator programs and and local partnerships that businesses can look into? And should they should they be, uh, be looking to find that support out there as well? I think if you're a new company coming into Hong Kong, I think it is really imperative that you sort of like um, do a little bit of legwork and maybe attend the various events and, and get to mm. know people just to, to steer you in the right way and, and just to, you know, get to know the, the lays of the land a little bit more, actually. So in Hong Kong, it's one of those places where literally, you know, everything ever since like the, the whole quarantine restrictions have, you know, have dropped, um, there's been events and non-stop. <laughs> 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 so, I <laughs> I know. I, that's not even like talking about the bars that Mark mentioned, which are also very good, as are the restaurants, by the way. But seriously, there's events going on all the time across a whole bunch of different niche areas. And, um, you know, I think in terms of networking, it's, um, you know, you, you would have no problems with that. Yeah. But you would also have like, um, you know, organizers like DBT, like in Hong Kong Chamber. and, and the, the Britcham, yeah, Chamber. all the chambers, all these different groups are, are very happy to to support and, and make connections and things. So I think, um, you know, 
there's different lots of activities happening in that kind of space and it would be good to have to do that when you first come here but I would suggest that you know probably not keep doing that because you would never <laughs> work on your your startup and your business yeah no and echoing all of that um Hong Kong is is a small place physically and operationally so to speak so um once as I said do your research know what your opportunity is here but once you're here um, and again, because it's so international, you'll undoubtedly meet people and opportunities that you didn't expect when you first came to Hong Kong. And like I said, it, it is very small in all aspects. So it's not hard to meet the right people. It's not hard to be introduced to the right people and new people. Um, so yes, you definitely have to get out and about, but it is very much worth it. No, that, that's, that, that's really good to hear because I think, you know, we're all... Um... We don't our handhelds in certain aspects and sometimes through life. So I think it, it works the same with businesses and we're very accustomed to lots of support over here. So um, hopefully um, that can sort of yeah support businesses in, in knowing that there's lots of support over in Hong Kong as well. I think, um, I know we touched on a lot, but like any real key advantages that, that maybe like tech businesses would be thinking about that maybe looking at expanding into Hong Kong, any key advantages that, that would really benefit them in, in researching and looking into these opportunities in Hong Kong a little bit more um, that spring to mind just as, as of like as a starter. Um, is there any sort of key advantages that sort of spring to mind straight away? Mark, you, you are on mute. Sorry. Sorry, uh, you sort of mean sort of key advice and suggestions for, com for... Ad ad advantages uh, and advice, um, but key advantages that sort of spring to mind straight away that that tech businesses that may be looking at that and don't know the first thing about Hong Kong at all. Yeah. Um, well, I would say like, so one of the things that we do is we do uh, produce quite a few bits and pieces of, of material on, on different sectors that are probably worth businesses reviewing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Jane mentioned about the kind of opportunities in prop tech. We produced a report, I think last year on the smart cities, um, and property tech sort of um, landscape in uh, in Hong Kong. So um, I, there are sector level sort of guides and publications that are worth looking at. I mean, on the fintech side, we actually have a dedicated fintech um, team in Hong Kong, and there's a website, a dedicated website with a huge amount of resource there for businesses to sort of um, look at. We've produced some webinars um, recently, the uh, the new crypto digital asset regulations that um, were announced. We uh, we sort of put together some webinars to mm -hmm. update update businesses on that. And, um, and so I think uh, there is quite a lot of re background research that, that companies can do even before heading out, heading out to, to, to Hong Kong. Um, I mean, I think that in terms of sort of advantages or um, the key, I think the key thing is, is around, is around that market research piece, because there are some markets in, 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 in China and Hong Kong that are very dominated by the local players and they can be quite hard mm. to penetrate. Um but there are there are other areas where there are definitely the UK definitely has a significant uh, advantage, and we have real talent. So things like marketing tech, for example, is one area. You know, create creative tech, where the UK is extremely strong, uh, just because of its uh, its history in that area and and our mm -hmm. um, the concentration of talent that we have here. So I think it is a bit of a case by case basis as to whether there is an or whether you know there are opportunities there for you um and so you know doing your own homework i think is probably the best way to uh to approach it to sort of look at whether whether there's an opportunity for your individual business uh in the market but as as corin says yep. there's no there's no um substitute for going out there and um talking to people because once you're there you'll really get to get under the skin of what's happening and then and then and then hopefully that will lead to to uh to sort of serendipitous opportunities amazing amazing no that's good that's it's great to hear and i think yeah 
key thing is is uh, hopefully we've wet the appetite of, of lots of businesses here today but to make sure you go and do that research and, and go and find out a lot more um look we're 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 at the end of the session, or we're at least at half past where we're supposed to cut off. Last thing is just any final advice. Any what's the first steps that a business should take, and any any real final advice from anyone at all that can really support these businesses and going and looking for that opportunity. I think again, just talk to us. That, that's what yeah. we're. <laughs> I thought that yeah. might be the question. The answer. <laughs> just talk to us. Like like I said before, you know, I'm I'm still surprised after all this time that more companies don't know that organizations like ourselves are here and it's free and it's confidential and we're just here to support businesses in Hong Kong. Yeah and I would say potentially you know I mentioned the the festivals and the events but those are really good kind of platforms in a way to to get to know a city see what's happening on the ground and see whether you know you you think there might be potential market for for your products and services so so you know make use of those as well actually. Brilliant. Yeah, and just reach out to us. You know, as I say, we we uh, we have a small London office here, so we're happy to meet people face to face and and talk it through. As I say, there's the mission coming as well. So if anyone wants more details on that, just reach out. Um, uh, yeah, so the door is always open. Amazing, amazing, great, great, yeah, great, great thing to end on because I think that that is the key thing is just make sure you're reaching out if you do want support in these in these um, in this sort of journey that you're going on, um, whether it be through business growth, come and um, come out and reach out to speak to us and um, and if you're looking at Hong Kong, obviously please do reach out to Jane, Corin, and, and Mark and and they'll be able to tell you a lot more as well. So, look, really great to have you all on here today. Thank you so much. It's been a great way to start the day uh, or end the day for Jane and Corin. <laughs> Um, but it's been a great way to, you know, hear these great opportunities, hear about a different, completely different um, environment to be able to maybe look to to expand your business and, and those opportunities. So, look, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Corin. Thank you, Mark. Um, and, yeah, reach out if you want any further support. But otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.